Hi, Emmanuel. Um, do you mind telling me a bit about yourself? Okay, so I completed my basic education um, in Ankasi uh, LA School, um, which is situated in the Quibri East dis uh, District um, um, of the Ashanti region. And uh, uh, from there, I progressed to Konfanochi High School, also in Kumasi, where I studied science, general science. And after that, I moved to University of Cape Coast, um, where I did a Bachelor of Science degree in Medical Laboratory Science. And uh, thereafter, I was um, fortunate enough to get a scholarship to do my master's in biochemistry at Memorial University of Newfoundland in Canada. Okay. All right. So um, let's start from the University of Cape Coast. So you said you did medical laboratory over there, right? Yeah. All right. So what does that cost entail? I mean, on a, um, if you are to explain to a normal person, um, is it something that is a professional program or it's one of these programs you can um, take and eventually diverge into any other field? So medical laboratory science uh, is a professional program and uh, it basically um, deals with diagnosing um, diseases, human diseases. So um, anyone who has gone to the hospital might have encountered medical laboratory scientists at one point in time. Um, so they take your blood sample or your urine or stool sample or sometimes tissue samples and uh, analyze it and uh, um, you know to help the doctor diagnose or you know figure out what is wrong with you. Um, the program is very broad uh, in the sense that we study um, some medical courses um, in addition to some basic science courses so you could divert into any biomedical science field you want since uh, the program is very multidisciplinary. Okay all right yeah. so after that, did you do your service? Yeah, so after that, um, I was retained by the department to work as a teaching assistant. And uh, I was also um, working in the university hospital, the University of Cape Coast Hospital, as a medical laboratory science intern. Okay, yeah. so that was for your service? Uh, yeah, that's my service. All right, so before you start practicing, do you take any exams or you just start practicing with your university degree? Yes, yeah, so after a uh, um, bachelor's, you have to do a mandatory one year um, internship um, okay. in a recognized hospital. So that's why I was in the University of Cape Coast Hospital. So after that, after that, you would um, have to write the um, Allied, Health, Allied uh, Health Professional Council exams. That will give you a license to practice as a medical laboratory science, scientist in any health facility in Ghana. Oh, okay. All right. So after your service, you said you got a scholarship to go and pursue your master's. Can you tell me yeah. about the scholarship, how you heard about the, the school, how you heard about the scholarship, and what went into the application process? Okay. So, um, okay, I started looking into scholarship way back in my third year. Okay. Um, so that's when I, I got interested to uh, pursue further studies and uh, basically do research. Um, so back then I, I started, you know, um, talking to people who have already done it. So, um, some of my lecturers had studied abroad okay. and so I started talking to them and they recommended that I write a GRE. And, uh, so initially I wrote the GRE, um, applied to a couple of American schools and, uh, unfortunately I didn't get in. So I got into one school, but, um, I got waitlisted for funding. So I couldn't go in, uh, I couldn't start my grad school in 2017. So I applied in 2016 um, in order to start grad school in, in 2017. So while, um, so after the, after the, uh, the wait period, so between um, 20, 2016 and 2017, um, a friend of mine, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine and he said, you know, he heard about a school called Memorial University of Newfoundland. I should check it out. So I, was just browsing through the school website when I chased upon um, an, uh, an advert um, on one of the professor's website that they are looking for a graduate student to uh, work on a particular project. So I just sent them an email um, with my CV and uh, my transcript and all the other documents that was listed on the advert. And they got back to me with an interview. So I went through the interview. Um, it was quite a very rigorous interview. Um, so I went through the interviews. I thankfully I passed the interview and I was now asked to formally apply to the school. So that's how I got to um, know about uh, Memory University and I applied um, and got in. 
Oh, okay. So with regards to your scholarship, it, it means that the professor was the one funding you, right? Yes. Yeah, so um, the way it works in Memoria is that uh, if you meet um, the school requirements, so there's a, a, a threshold. Um, so in order to do any master's uh, program, uh, mostly the research programs, you have to have a minimum of GP of uh, 3.0. So once you meet that and above, um, the school would consider you for the School of Graduate Studies Fellowship. Okay. So I was uh, I was awarded the School of Graduate uh, Studies Fellowship, um, so which covered um, um, half of my funding package, and my supervisor supplemented uh, the rest. Okay. And yeah. so with the package, the funding package you are talking about, um, yeah. what does it cover? So the funding package covers your tuition and your stipend. Okay. So the university sets set a minimum um, um, funding package a graduate student is supposed to hold. Um, so in Memorial University, master students, um, I think it's around seventeen or uh, seventeen to eighteen thousand um, dollars per year. So that's the minimum the university has set. So um, for me, in my case, the School of Graduate Studies awarded me a fellowship which covered half, and my supervisor had to like uh, complement um, the the tuition. All right. And then for the master's program, how many years is it? So it's two years. It's two years. All right. Yeah. So you said you wrote GRE for um, the U.S. schools, but you didn't yeah. get um, funding. Um, yeah. So for Canada, did you have to take any other exam? No, Canada, you don't need GRE. For most of the programs, you don't need GRE. But I know for some programs like, you know, uh, computer science and some engineering programs, you do require GRE. But in my case, uh, but, uh, uh, biochemistry, you don't, you don't need a GRE. Okay. And also for your master's program, what, what are you doing for your thesis? What, what, what's the research about? So the research um, is uh, in cancer research. So um, uh, my project was focused on understanding how obesity contributes to the progression and metastasis of breast cancer. So it's known that people who are obese, you know, have a higher chance of dying from breast cancer. Uh, they have at least 30% 30, 30 um, chance of dying from breast cancer, and they have increased metastasis. So the, the, the cancer uh, basically spreads more in obese individuals compared to lean individuals. So um, I wanted to find out why this is so. So what, what exactly you know, is in the obese individual that causes you know, the um, increased spread okay. in uh, uh, breast cancer amongst okay. them? All right. So after your master's, what did you do? Did you work? Oh. Um, so I just finished my master's. Um, okay. And uh, so um, right after, before I finished, I started looking for PhD uh, programs. So I applied to a couple of PhD programs and I got into um, McGill University. So I'll be starting in fall. Uh, I'm starting in fall. Okay. Yeah. And can you tell me about the application process also for your PhD? Um, how was it? So um, in Canada, generally, you have to find a supervisor before you can apply to any um, school. So I started reaching out to different uh, professors in, you know, in different schools. Um, so I basically sent them an email um, expressing interest in a particular project. So you have to go through their websites, read some of their papers to understand exactly what they are doing in their lab. And if that's, you know, powers your interest or suits your interest, you reach out to them and you tell them, you know, what you can bring on board, you know, your experience and basically how you are going to contribute to the to their uh, research group. And that's what I did. So I just sent them an email, added my CV and uh, my transcripts and uh, um, yeah, they go back to me with an interview, just like my master. So I went through the interview process, and uh, um, that's how I got my PhD. All right. So it means that you didn't write any proposal. No, no. So usually they have grants in their lab, and they have like ongoing projects, and uh, they basically need students to come and work on those uh, projects. So um, they have all those um, active projects listed on their website. So you just have to go through the uh, their website. And uh, sometimes find out if if it's you know if it's a current pro uh, project because some profs don't update their website that often. So um, you have to like find out if it's an active project, then you apply okay. or send them an email. Yeah. All right. And so I know you did your master's, but let's take it as someone who has just finished their undergrad. 
Mm-hmm. Can can such people also apply to that program directly? That's taking your undergrad in Ghana and transitioning into the PhD. Um, that's that's quite rare. Um, even for people who did their undergrad in um, Canada. Um, so what happens is that you'd have to, if you want to go straight into PhD, you first apply for masters, and maybe in your second year or by the end of your first year, you transfer to PhD. So in that case, you wouldn't get your masters. So you do your PhD. Um, so the PhD is usually four years if you have the masters and five years, five to six years if you don't have a masters. So um, instead of doing it for four, uh, four years, you do it for five years. So basically that's how it works. Oh, okay. But you are, your grade has to be like extremely high, like 4.0, 3.9, 4.0. That's from the that. undergrad. Yeah, from the undergrad to be considered for that. <laughs> Um, option yeah okay so that means that with your gpa from ghana they don't try to convert it into a canadian system they just accept the ghanaian gpa um yeah so the school internally they have um they are they are able to convert it to the canadian system so i know for some u.s schools they ask you to go to ws uh, where you know you they convert the ws um uh, convert your Ghanaian grade to the um, American system, but in Canada they don't. Mostly, most of most of the times they don't do that. So the school um, do the con- conversion for you. Oh, okay. And so for your PhD, also, what will you be studying? So I'll be studying uh, experimental medicine. So it's it's actually a drug drug development program. So we'll be developing, try to develop a drug for breast cancer. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. All right. And also with your program, I realize you keep mentioning biochemistry. With the undergraduate degrees in the university, which of the courses do you think are a better fit for your program? Um, so I remember when I was applying, I was a bit skeptical because I was coming from medical laboratory background. Will I be accepting the program? And I remember asking my prof and she was like, um, I don't care <laughs> your background. Once you have a basic science background, you understand basic science. Uh, you would you do you 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 would be okay uh, because um, so the the courses you take are design or you you pick your courses based on your background and based on your research uh, focus. So even though I did biochemistry, uh, I have a, or I have a master's in biochemistry. The courses I took weren't like hardcore biochemistry courses. So I remember I was taking courses from the medical school. I was um, for example, I took um, molecular medicine a molecular medicine course. I took a cell and molecular biology course, and I didn't. I don't think I took any. No, I don't. I, I didn't take any um, hardcore biochemistry um, 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 course. So, in my department, for instance, we have people who uh, who have uh, who, who have a medical degree and people who have um, you know vet um, background. So, um, it's a very multidisciplinary um, uh, uh, program, I should say. So, with your junior colleagues in Ghana. Um, what, what advice do you have for them, those who are thinking about pursuing graduate studies, those who are thinking about following your career path? I mean, with all the challenges, everything you have learned from your experience, um, what kind of advice do you have for them? Um, for me, I would always say start early. Um, for me, I started pretty early, and that helped me um, you know, understand the process because it can be very overwhelming. So imagine you just finished your undergrad and you want to apply and you have no clue, you know, where to start from. So I'll say, um, you know, sometimes if, if you are very sure that you want to do grad school and uh, let's say you're in your third or second year, you should start early, start looking at the schools, uh, start looking at the, you know, requirements, what are the documents, you know, what are the minimum GPAs, what are the minimum GRE scores. Then you start from there, you know, start preparing, and uh, you also reach out to people who have done it. So in my case, I remember when I started, I was clueless. So I went on LinkedIn. I just looked at someone uh, who was from UCC and you know was in the states studying. Um, I wrote him a, uh, a message that okay, this is my uh, situation. I want to apply, but I don't know where to start. And he basically guided me through the process. And uh, yeah, so for me, I think I would recommend that people, you know, if you, do, if you don't know where to start, just reach out to people for help and uh, also spend time, you know, researching different schools and uh, their program requirements. All right. I thank you very much, Emmanuel, for um, taking time to share your experience and your journey with me. I'm pretty sure those who would watch it would really appreciate um, the time you have sacrificed or taken off your busy schedules to yeah. actually help them with their applications. Thank you very much.
uh, whoever, whoever, 